Yes, it's $145, and of course it's coming from Chanel, part of their Sublimage range, which is their like top tier skincare offering. The Radiance Revealing Rich Cleansing Soap. It just sounds booty. <laughs> Let me test out my French skills, which are non-existent. Sublimage Le Savon de Swan. De Swan? Sublimage Le Savon de Swan. Of course, I'm not suggesting that anybody would ever need to go out and spend $145 on any type of face soap or cleanser, but it was a little bit of a treat for myself. I love Chanel, so it just made sense to me as, yeah, just a little, just a little treat. <laughs> Plus, I actually think Chanel is a very underrated skincare brand. I don't see them spoken about that much in the skincare world, especially like as opposed to other luxury brands. I don't feel like any other brand or hardly any other brand puts as much effort into sense or reality as Chanel does. So in my mind, they actually need a little bit more hype. Maybe not this soap at $145 specifically, but they've got more reasonably priced cleansers. Also, soap or Sindet bars are supposed to be a little bit of a trending skincare category. I'm not sure if they'll take off, but I kind of purchased this to jump on it early to see if it's something that I would actually be able to utilize in my routine. This one sounds pretty promising. The Radiance Revealing Rich Cleansing Soap is supposed to have a silky soft lather with a purifying action while respecting skin's pH. I think the note about pH is especially relevant when we're talking about a soap, so I'm glad Chanel addressed this in their product description. As an aside, this soap does contain sulfates, but it's the Lorith version, which is supposed to already be a little bit more gentle. Sulfates I'm actually not opposed to. I think they can be blended and balanced really well in a formula but I'm still curious to see how well Chanel is able to balance. While I'm filming this introduction, I actually haven't tried it, so I'm going to cut to myself probably in the bathroom using it for the first time to kind of give you a first impression. So I've just been sitting here for a few minutes kind of waiting for the dryness to kick in from the cleanser because I was expecting this to be fairly stripping. But whatever magic they've done, it's actually really well blended. My skin feels very smooth and actually quite moisturized. It's a sensation that I wasn't anticipating. So yeah, whatever magic Chanel has done here, they've made a really successful product, at least as far as the first impressions go. The way it kind of lathers is really nice. It just feels really sensorial and luxurious. I didn't think I'd enjoy using like a soap bar as much as I have, but of course I might change my mind in a couple of weeks, but the very first initial use is very positive. And I love the fragrance. I just, I've loved the whole experience. And actually the amount of lather that I got versus how much like soap I had to use, I feel like this cleanser is gonna last weeks. So I was kind of worried that it would run out soon and that way it would make the price point even less like value. But it seems like this will go on and on for a while. And then probably a little bit of a follow up about a week or so later, just so that um, I have some more relevant context to give you. The cleansing soap does feature a few key ingredients. Um, Chanel's sort of story around sublimage is the vanilla planifolia, and this includes the vanilla planifolia water, which is supposed to have antioxidant properties. Vanilla planifolia is actually a skincare ingredient of a lot of interest for Chanel. I believe they started recent researching it in 1995 and have even gone to the effort of opening their own open sky laboratory in 2002 just to have a lot of exclusivity and processing and handling of this ingredient for their sublimage product. Chanel has a dedicated team of phytochemists and ethnobotanists who work in conjunction with local farmers in these open sky laboratories to get the best out of these ingredients. Although I love it when brands go to the effort of developing their own signatures, I'm not sure that the vanilla planifolia is particularly relevant in a cleansing soap like this. Antioxidants in general in a wash off product, you know, I don't know that they're kind of clingy enough to the skin to make a difference but it's part of this kind of overall family of products. So that's something that doesn't bother me. It definitely makes sense in this context. Another feature ingredient is something called Harungana extract. I think it's how you say it. Chanel claims this has detoxifying properties. Detox as a whole thing is something I don't really believe in. A lot of ingredient suppliers talk about it within the context of having a purifying action, which of course makes sense. You know, this is a cleanser, we are purifying the skin. But some ingredient suppliers also claim that this extract has anti-acne effects, especially with whiteheads. Chanel doesn't make these claims, so it's not specifically relevant for this product. But it's always nice to see things, especially since I have congestion prone skin. So things that might help with that, I'm all aboard. 
beyond the feature ingredients, which again, I don't think are that necessarily relevant in a cleanser, but this formula actually reads really nicely. It has a nice blend of surfactants, a lot of hydrating ingredients, but what particularly impressed me was the inclusion of sugar alcohols. I love to see sugar alcohols in skincare products, especially in cleansers and toners. So these ingredients, along with some classic skincare products, plus a little bit of Chanel Whimsy, this combination very much makes me happy in the skincare space. As far as substantiation goes, Chanel has done some testing across four weeks with 31 women. The tests show that the appearance of pores was reduced by 19% and texture was improved by 36%. Thank you for hanging out with me. Let me know what your thoughts are on Chanel skincare and whether you'd even want to try something like this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Sam by the Counter. I'll see you in the next one.